First, we want to measure our silicone resin molds. So we measure the inside dimensions, and that's what we will cut our black micarta with. So the molds I have are 10 centimeters by 2 centimeters. We mark it off, and the micarta is 1 16th of an inch, very thin. And so when we have it cut out, this is what it looks like. Here's the size, and we'll see that it fits perfectly into our mold. Polish your artifacts and then wash and dry them off as well as your epoxy molds in a fan so there is no dust on them. All right, now that the resin is all cured, I let it sit for a little over 24 hours just to make sure we pulled everything out and you can see that it is looking good. You can see through the side, you can see those bubbles, those bubbles, if we look through this way, go focus, they are not in the path of where we're gonna file it or sand it down, it's all along the sides because I took a, um, a, uh, a toothpick and move the bubbles to the sides before it cured. So these all look good, but I did get a little bit over ambitious and I went too far and these were the last ones I tried or the last ones in the set that I was trying to get the bubbles out and it didn't turn out too well. There's bubbles all in this thing so I might turn these into just crap picks and do a giveaway. However, I also wanted to show you the, um, the googly eye picks as well because these are lighter. These don't have metal in it so when I pulled these out, this one can see floated on its side so everything's at a diagonal so what I have to do is sand this down so it's flat again put it back in there and add some more resin on top to finish this one off because yeah the googly eyes are sticking out there otherwise sometimes still 
on the bottom you can see how there's like a little ring right there a little resin got underneath our our scale there so you got to watch for that and so you have to sand it to get it flat again and so that's what we're going to do next is we're going to go through we're going to make sure that everything on the back is flat here nice and flat for when we glue our pick together and we're going to sand down around the edges here and as well sand down a round top and start forming the top of our pick for when we glue it together we're actually going to polish that pretty clean that way it's ready for gluing so we don't have to screw with it later okay as you can see what i did was as i took these i flattened down all the sides right here on the tops to get it completely flat and then i shaped it around the sides but before i shaped the sides i found um another one that I thought would fit good, another scale, and I put them together and taped them together like this before shaping the sides. I also just did a general shape to leave just a lot of room for um, after I glue the pick to shape it up um, at the very end. So the uh, next part is I'm going to um, take these two right here that are taped up and ready. I'm going to polish up the tops around those and get those ready for glued. All right, you can see on each of these, I found a, um, a scale for each. I taped it together, and then I polished the very tips off on each side of where the pick will be coming out of. That way, when we're done, we don't have to polish near the pick tip there. The rest of this will get shaped afterwards, but we just want to take care of that. And so you can see that these are done. Same with this one right here. Just the real tip is really polished off and ready to go. And the pick itself is ready. And now we are ready to glue. So the thing I did next is I drilled very, very small holes in each of the scales. And you gotta be careful so it don't go through because that's really thin, especially with this epoxy. It'll show up white on the other side when you drill into that epoxy. So very, very small holes, and that's just a little bit extra to allow that epoxy to grip onto to prevent um, uh, slipping and uh, extra pressure uh, um, after it's dried. I made the mistake of not recording the gluing and the final shaping process. Long story short, when you're gluing, make sure you, before you glue, you cover the top metal part of your pick with some tape. That way the glue doesn't get on it. It makes it easier when you're done. That way you don't have to scrape it off and it you know, messes up your nice polished pick right there. Um, after you're done gluing, uh, remember that up until this point, every single bit of this was not sanded or shaped at all. It's just very blocky. The only part that's shaped and finalized is the tip right here. And when we're done gluing, we do the rest of this. The reason why we wait till the end is because some of these pieces can be really thick. You can see how close to the surface those are. So that's why I saved the sanding to the very, very, very end. So I can take my time, not overdo it beforehand, and uh, just not screw up. <laughs> because once you mess up, once you cross that boundary of getting into one of your pieces, it's just, it's different and it's not the same after that and it doesn't look as good. So yeah, um, take your time at the end with the sanding and it will turn out gorgeous. I highly recommend doing a buffing wheel on it at the end to get that nice shine, just that nice clear see-through look like that. And um, yeah, let's see uh, if, what you all can think of. I've seen some really cool stuff out there. I've already seen some uh, uh, little pins from uh, locks, from like master locks, whatnot, inside of a, uh, a handle. I've seen people do different colors and um, glitters and stuff with them. I've seen people uh, recently cast a, a bee and a handle on the end. Uh, they gave it to Picksmith. It was really cool looking. Uh, just a lot of really cool stuff out there. So I hope this helped if that was something that you're looking into trying out. Thanks for watching.